In this video, we will focus on FX swaps. We will take a look at the mechanics of FX swaps, that means how FX swaps work, and also we will take a look at how FX swaps can be used in a very practical context. Okay? This video will be helpful for candidates who are appearing for the FRM Part 1 exam. FX swaps as a topic also appears in the curriculum of FRM Part 2 exam and actually also in CFA Level 3. Okay, so let's begin. In this video, as an example sake, we'll be working with Euro USD as our chosen currency pair. The way I have written down this currency pair, Euro is my base currency and USD is my quote currency. Let the current spot exchange rate for this currency pair be X0 is equal to 1.2. The way I have written down my currency pair, this spot exchange rate basically means it is 1.2 USD per unit euro. Okay, so 1 euro is equivalent to 1.2 USD. I have also tabulated here the forward exchange rate for euro USD for a number of maturities. Please note that forward exchange rates as a convention are quoted in terms of points. Okay. To get to the actual forward exchange rate, all you have to do is you have to apply the correct number of points corresponding to the chosen maturity on top of the spot exchange rate. Now, as far as the analysis in this video is concerned, let's take the perspective of a US based firm, which means that USD will be our local currency or let's say our reporting currency and Euro will be our foreign currency. To understand FX swaps, let's very quickly revisit two very simple contracts which form the building blocks of an FX swap. The first of these is a very simple spot contract. In this spot contract, as of today, which is time t equal to 0, basically I have purchased 10 million euros and in return I have paid USD. If the current exchange rate, I mean the current spot exchange rate is 1.2, then against this receipt of 10 million euros, I'll have to pay how many USD? Basically 10 million times 1.2, which is 12 million USD. Okay, so this is a very simple spot contract and in this contract, since I am purchasing euros, I'm taking up a long position in my foreign currency. Okay, then the next contract is one in which the exchange of my two currencies involved, again these are Euro and USD, does not happen as of today but rather it happens at some point in the future. Okay, so this point in time is one year from today. This time the nature of the exchange is different, it's actually opposite. This time I am not purchasing euros, I am actually selling euros and hence a downward pointing arrow. The amount is the same, 10 million euros and in return I am receiving USD. To keep things fair, that means to make the value of this contract zero as of today, let's assume that the exchange rate which is connecting these two exchanges, these two legs of this contract, let it be the forward exchange rate. So, for this period of one year from this table, the forward exchange rate would turn out to be 1.2, the spot exchange rate plus 179.1 divided by 10,000. Okay, so this tells me that my forward exchange rate, let's call it F0T, is simply equal to 1.2 plus 179.1 divided by 10,000, and that comes to 1.2. 1791. So, in this particular transaction, if I am selling 10 million euros one year from today at the forward exchange rate, how much USD will I be receiving? It will be 1.21791 times 10, which gives me 12.1791 million USD. Okay, now this was a long spot, this is a short forward contract. What happens if I were to combine these two contracts and treat them to be a single contract? 
and this is what I have done here. Okay, I have combined a long spot with a short forward on the same foreign currency and I am treating the combination of the two to be a single contract and this exactly is the cash flow diagram of an FX swap. Okay, now let's do this. Let's note a few points about FX swaps as can be observed from this diagram. Number one, in an FX swap, there are two dates involved. There will be two dates at which currency exchanges happen. So in this FX swap, these dates are today and the date which is one year from today. The nature of the exchanges is different. If in this exchange, I am receiving the foreign currency, in this exchange, the opposite thing happens and that is I am paying out the foreign currency. That's the first thing to note. The second thing to note is that the exchange rate which connects the two legs at any given date or any given time is different. The exchange rate which connects these two is the spot exchange rate. The exchange rate which connects these two is the forward exchange rate. Okay, that's number two. Number three, please note that out of these two currencies, Euro and USD, we have retained the same amount for the Euro. Okay, it's 10 million here and it's 10 million here as well. The amount on the other currency is different. 12 million here for USD and a different amount 12.1791 million USD for this one. Okay, that's my third thing to note. At this stage, let me very quickly tell you the definition of an FX swap. An FX swap can be thought of to be, let's say, a contract in which there is simultaneous and opposite or let's say offsetting spot and forward transactions that have been combined together. Okay, it's a simultaneous spot and a forward and it's offsetting in nature. It was a long spot and it's coupled with a short forward. Another type of FX swap can very well be one in which I have a short spot and long forward. It is just that the spot and the forward need to be offsetting in nature. They need to be different, opposite in nature. Okay. Now, let's take a look at how to practically make use of this FX swap. Come back to the example of our US-based firm. Let this firm have operations in Europe and let these operations which are in a foreign country require, let's say, 10 million of funding. Okay. Now, if this firm, let's say, is more comfortable generating this funding in its local market, which is the US market, it goes and checks what is the prevailing interest rate in this market. Let the prevailing interest rate be 2%. Okay, that's, let's say, a risk-free interest rate. And our firm is able to generate its funding, which means it's able to borrow at this interest rate of 2%. So let me do this. Let me ask my firm to borrow an amount which is 10 million times 1.2 and hence 12 million USD in its local market. So as of today, which is time t equal to 0, my firm will receive 12 million USD and since the interest rate is 2% per annum, after one year, my firm has to pay out an amount which is 12 million times 1.02 and that comes to 12.24 million USD. Okay, so this is a borrowing which has been done in the firm's local market, but the funds were required in euros. So let's do this. Let's couple this borrowing with this FX swap. Let's overlay this FX swap on top of this borrowing in the local currency. What is then the impact of combining these two? Well, this guy and this guy, they cancel. They are both as of the same time point and they are pointing in different directions. This guy will be retained as it is. This guy will be retained as it is. These two can offset each other. Okay, so 12.24 is being paid out. 12.1791 million is being received. So on a net net basis, the firm is paying out 12.24 minus 12.1791, which comes to 0.0609 million USD. 
okay in euro terms if i were to use this forward exchange rate this can be converted to this guy divided by 1.21791 and this gives me approximately 0 0.05 million euros okay so my net cash flow diagram looks something like this receiving 10 million euros paying out these 10 million euros plus this tiny amount which is 0 0.05 million euros so by combining my local borrowing with this fx swap my firm has actually been able to generate this financing in euros and effectively in the end my firm is paying out an interest rate which is 0 0.05 divided by 10 and this comes to approximately 0.5 percent okay so this is a very practical use of fx swaps it can help you finance an asset in this case finance operations in a foreign country by borrowing in your local currency and then swapping out what you get through this borrowing and getting the proceeds in the foreign currency okay now before i stop is there anything special about this 0.5 percent the all in financing rate in euros that we have been able to achieve if you were to take a look at all the data which is available to you we know the forward exchange rate we know the spot exchange rate we know the interest rate in usd if i were to plug all this data available to me into the covered interest rate parity which looks something like this and back out the interest rate in euro what you will observe that this interest rate comes out to be 0.5 percent okay the same interest rate which we got as the implied or you know the effective interest rate by combining the borrowing in usd with the fx swap what does it tell me it tells me that in this very idealized situation one in which i assume that all these instruments which i used they were all correctly and fairly priced in this very idealized situation when there were no transaction costs that means there were no bid offer spreads there was no counterparty credit risk for me to worry about so in this very idealized situation by combining local borrowing with fx swap i am getting the same interest rate cost that i would have got if i had let's say generated this 10 million euros of borrowing directly in the eurozone market okay so this is pointing me towards a situation of no arbitrage okay so this video was all about understanding fx swaps i mean the mechanics of fx swaps how fx swaps work how to intuitively understand how FX swaps can be broken down into much simpler contracts and also understanding a very simple situation in which FX swaps can be used. Okay?